welcome to everyone joining us for this Ask a Radiation Oncologist session. Today we'll be focusing on patient safety. I'm Dr. Sue Evans from Yale University, and I'm going to be moderating the session. Throughout the session, we hope to answer the questions that you might have about what your cancer treatment team does to ensure your safety during radiation treatment. We've got a panel of expert medical professionals who work with patients each and every day who are going to share with you everything that they do and everything their colleagues do to make sure that a patient's treatment process is as safe as possibly can be. So I'd like to welcome today, we have Dr. Julie Pollard-Larkin, who is um, from the Department of Radiation Physics at MD Anderson. We have Javonda Julian, who's a radiation therapist at Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. And we have Dr. John Phillips, who's a radiation oncologist at Tennessee Oncology. We're gonna start with some questions. So if I'd like to start with the first question, if we may. So Dr. Pollard Larkin, tell me what is radiation therapy and how is it used to treat cancer? Thank you so much for this question, Dr. Evans. And hello, everyone. Radiation therapy happens to be one of the most commonly used modalities in order to treat cancer patients' cancer. It utilizes radiation in order to both target and align and to kill those little cancer cells. It comes in a, multi a multiple set of flavors, whether it be electrons, photons, or even protons, if you've got the money, whether it be <laughs> no matter what location. And we have different ways of delivering radiation therapy. It's not all external beam, meaning that very large um, linear accelerator that some of you guys are used to seeing either um, in person or whether you go and follow your family. There's also different types of metal, uh, radiation therapy treatment, such as brachytherapy, where we use either little sources of highly radioactive material in order to place them in the sites of disease and kill those tumors on site, as well as other ways of delivering it that are even more interesting all utilizing ionizing radiation to do the most important thing, which is both to vis visualize, to see where the tumor is, and then kill it right in its location. Thank you, Dr. Pollard-Larkin. Now, Dr. Phillips, my understanding is that about 50% of cancer patients will receive radiation at some time, is that right? Yeah, so a very large uh, portion of patients diagnosed with cancer will interface with radiation oncology at some point. Uh, for some of those patients, uh, radiation is used as the primary treatment. So it is the main therapy uh, that gets rid of their cancer. For some patients, we use it in what we call the adjuvant setting, which is where you've had a, a big surgery to remove the cancer. And then the radiation is like buying insurance. It's there to prevent the cancer from coming back, even though the bulk of the cancer has already been removed. Um, and then there are other settings where we use it for what we call palliation, which is where uh, the radiation is used to alleviate pain or to prevent specific types of symptoms uh, to improve patients' quality of life. So there are a lot of, and some patients interface with radiation in all of those phases. Uh, and so uh, we're here for a lot of different reasons, and you may see us at different points in your cancer journey. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. I think we'll take the next question, if we may. All right, Dr. Pollard Lurkin, tell me, who is involved in planning radiation treatment? Almost everyone you see on this screen is involved in planning your radiation therapy treatment. I want you to know you're special and so is your treatment. So when you come in for radiation therapy treatment, we do what's called a CT simulation. The doctor is there to make sure that we're imaging the right area where the disease is. And then alongside me, I have someone like Jovanda. I have a radiation therapist who is a technologist who is adept at both utilizing imaging platforms that utilize radiation therapy, as well as the linear accelerator that kill it. So then she gives me the image data set that I need, and then myself, and then another allied health professional known as a dosimetrist, someone who actually measures dose, literally radiation dose, and makes sure that it goes to where you want, utilizing my favorite system in the whole world. It's called a TPS, treatment planning system, otherwise known as the, um, the game that allows you to kill that tumor. So we take in your CT image information, and then we decide in a nice little software platform, how do we best utilize the linear accelerator that Jovanda, the radiation therapist uses, in order to target your tumor, spare all normal tissues, and give as much dose to it as what the doctor, um, Dr. Phillips has mentioned earlier. 
Then that plan is created, it's actually reviewed, and then the physicists make sure that it meets all the wonderful standards that we have put into place. And then guess what? Jovanda again enters the scene because she will be the technologist to help you deliver your treatment on a daily basis on that linear accelerator. She'll go through her checks to make sure everything seems completely up to her standard and up to whatever checklist she has. And then, and only then, will we proceed with treatment for you. So it's the whole team that is involved in coming up with your treatment plan and making sure it's perfect just for you and your disease. Thank you, Dr. Paula Zarkin. So Dr. Felix, Dr. Phillips, please tell me, where do you come in in the treatment planning process? How does the radiation oncologist interface? Yeah, so um, from the planning portion, one of the first things that we decide on is the intent. And, and that's the idea of what are we going to treat how many treatments are we going to do it in? What's the total dose going to be? Um, and then, uh, as we were saying, what, after you do the radiation mapping, the radiation oncologist's job is to help determine what's tumor, what's not tumor. What do we want to aim at and what do we want to miss? Uh, once we do that, we turn it over to our colleagues in the physics department and the dosimetry department. Uh, and their job is to help create a plan that we feel like maximizes the chance that we kill the cancer and minimizes the risk uh, to any of the surrounding normal tissues or organs that we don't want to harm with the radiation. That process, I always liken it to a space shuttle launch. It go, it's iterative. It goes over and over, and we look at it multiple times. And so... Um, Ultimately, we decide on a plan that we think is the best plan that uh, weighs the risks and benefits of treatment. Uh, and uh, once everyone is happy and everyone has to be happy, we ultimately decide that's the plan that we're going to use to treat uh, your cancer. That's great, Dr. Phillips. So when will the patients meet you and how do they interact with you? Tell me all of the work that goes into being a radiation oncologist besides the treatment planning. Sure. So uh, or what a radiation oncologist is, is a physician. So we are doctors that train specifically in how to use radiation to manage cancer. Uh, we go through five years of training after medical school, which is the longest dedicated time uh, to exclusive oncology training in all of medicine. Um, radiation oncologists work with your medical oncologist, your surgeon, some and other doctors like pulmonologists, things that are specialized depending on the type of tumor you have. Uh, we work together as a team to come up with your overall cancer management plan. So you meet a radiation oncologist at the outset when we're deciding on what the best way forward is. The radiation oncologist is there when we decide uh, how we're going to treat the tumor when we do the radiation mapping process. The radiation oncologist meets with you typically every week during your radiation treatment to help shepherd you through the process, manage any side effects that you're having uh, from the treatment. Uh, and then when you finish uh, your therapy, the radiation oncologist follows you to make sure that uh, we understand how your cancer responded to the radiation, as well as manage any ongoing side effects that you have after the radiation is completed. Uh, I always think of it as a long-term journey. I have patients uh, that I've been following for five, six, seven years, and I'm sure uh, our other folks have patients they've been following even longer. So from that first visit, it can be a, a, a decades-long relationship. Thank you. Now, on to the next person in our showcase here. I'm wondering about Dr. Pollard Larkin. Can you talk to me a little bit and tell our audience what a physicist does? Oh, yes. And this is so fun because it takes me back to why I do what I do. So the most important person <laughs> that I got to meet when my mom was treated with radiation therapy as a new breast cancer patient was the medical physicist. And that is a person that I didn't even know existed back in 2000 when I met them. So a lot of us are familiar with just physicists, people like Einstein, people who are brilliant, who are come up with wonderful theories that help to decide how this world and the planets were created. Well, guess what? A medical physicist understands exactly how radiation works and interacts with matter and can best be utilized either for imaging or for treatment modalities in order to make sure you have an optimal treatment plan and delivery so that you can survive and get to meet and talk with Dr. Phillips and Dr. Evans for the decades that he just mentioned. So a physicist, a medical physicist, is that core personnel that's looking at the entire treatment process 
for any radiation oncology patient and making sure that we are following all the rules and regulations and laws, both national, international, as well as state and federal, to allow for you to be um, having the quite experience that you want, meaning being having precise and accurate treatment. We understand and are responsible for the QA and quality control of every piece of equipment that you come into contact with regarding radiation oncology. That is your chief safety officer, making sure that both you as a patient and then your family, loved ones, and even strangers you don't care about in the community are not harmed by the types of delivery of treatment that we offer to you. So we happen to be, first and foremost, quality control safety officers. Every day and every month and every on an annual basis, we are doing different procedures to ensure that that machinery within that radiation oncology service is being used appropriately. And then guess what? On top of that, we make sure all the computer interfaces that manage the data that represents your treatment actually gets managed appropriately and is sending accurately the information regarding you and the care that you want to have. So we are that person in the background. We're almost like a quarterback for the radiation oncology department, making sure that whatever Dr. Phillips, whatever Dr. Evans, whatever Jovanda needs and wants for you as a patient can happen. And when we realize that, you know what, this isn't feasible, then I have to be that, you know, un <laughs> there's a person that you don't like, Dr. Phillips, I'll call him and be like, guess what? This won't work, sir. You know, I would <laughs> love to give you that kind of treatment, but this machine here, not set for that. This is what we can attain. And we work with our allies and our colleagues in order to give you the best plan possible with the machinery and the equipment and the facilities that we have available at our site. Wonderful answer. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's hear what uh what Javanda can do. Javanda, can you can you match this enthusiasm coming from Dr. Pollard Larkin? I don't I don't know. It's pretty strong. I'm not sure if I can, but I'll definitely give it a try. <laughs> tell, tell me about what a radiation therapist is and, and what you guys do. Tell our audience. Okay. So after the treatment plan is done and everyone's done their checks, they then give it to the radiation therapist. That's when myself and one of my colleagues give you a call. So basically the radiation therapist operates the radiation equipment and they position you for treatment every single day. So you will see them daily, Monday through Friday for treatments. Um, they're also basically the go-between between between the nurses, the doctors, the physicists. You will see this person Monday through Friday. If you need anything, please reach out to your radiation therapist. If you have any questions, concerns, anything about your cancer or treatment in particular, and we can also direct you if you need to. Javanda, I love that advice. Um, you know, I can't tell you the number of things that the patients feel comfortable going to the therapist with first because they do see you every day. Yeah. So I think for our patients listening, you know, we certainly encourage you to go to your doctor um, and, and tell them these things that we want to hear, right? But also the radiation therapists are a wonderful um, ally for you um, and someone that you should feel very comfortable with talking to um, about what you're experiencing, what your worries are, any of those things along the way um, so that we can get your questions answered and keep you very informed. Um, so I think we're ready for the next question. Um, and that is about the safety of radiation treatment and how the machines used to deliver radiation are kept safe. How often is the machine checked? What, what's that process like? On a daily basis. That is the best question, Dr. Evans. I want you to understand, we care about your safety because literally that's my job. And it's also Jovanda's job. It's also the radiation oncologist's job. It's everyone's job, seriously, and except for the people, who, the people who do patient transport. They're the only ones not checking this machine. What I want you to understand is that we check not only is it giving the type of radiation that we want to um, have delivered to you for that treatment, we're also measuring the intensity of it, the uniformity of it. Is it giving it in a nice way, so the pattern that we anticipate? All of these things are being evaluated on a daily basis. And then we actually do even more robust testing on a monthly and annual basis. And this information, guess what? Gets checked out by the federal government. Trust me, nobody wants to be up against the federal government or the state legislators with regards to how well we're taking care of our equipment. And then we also have other procedures such as acceptance testing and, um, and commissioning to make sure that all the equipment that we have matches what the actual manufacturer says it can do. 
then take it so much more important than even how you treat your own um, your own car that you drive. So please believe these machines are going on about what four million dollars, Dr. Phillips and Dr. Evans. So if you have four million dollar equipment, please believe nobody's just letting it be and disabused or not up to code and up to date. We have engineers and everyone available to make sure that the quality of that treatment that you get from that machine is being verified, vetted, and approved and um, validated on a routine basis by everybody involved. And the machine even checks itself. But that's a whole other hour discussion. I just <laughs> want you to know that you, the 0.2%, oh, it's real. I really want you to understand that. you It's not the machine that's going to be the problem. Make sure you're telling them the right name and those kinds of things, the simple things that are your real um, issue. But safety, that is the top priority of every person who's employed in a rat on department, and especially the physicists there. Thank you, Dr. Pollard Larkin. Um, so I think we'll do the next question for Dr. Phillips. Um, so how do you decide patients' treatment schedules? Um, how do you determine whether a patient needs 30 treatments or one treatment? How often, whether it's once a week or every day? Walk, walk our audience through that process a little bit. Yeah. So as Dr. Evans said, uh, there's a wide variety of number of treatments that we use. Um, in radiation lingo, we call that fractionation. And basically that just means how much do we divide the dose up? that we need to deliver to get the effect that we're going for. Um, the way that we decide on that is on a by disease basis. So for every disease that we treat, there have been scores and scores, unless it's a rare disease, of clinical trials looking at that exact question. What's the right dose to achieve the effect that we want? And how do we divide it up to maximize the chance that we cure the cancer, minimize the risk of long-term side effects, um, and make it as convenient as we possibly can. If we could do every treatment in one treatment, we would probably try to do that. Uh, but for certain diseases, because of the tumor location, particularly when it's pressed right up against something that we really don't want to hurt with radiation, we have to divide the dose up into small daily doses that we call fractions, um, so that uh, each day while we were killing the tumor, the normal tissues like your heart and your lungs and your kidneys, they actually are able to recover from that daily dose of radiation. Um, and so for each disease site, we have tested all different schedules and all different doses to ultimately arrive at, usually for any individual disease site, there's a set of things that we can use. And how we decide on one treatment versus three treatments or five treatments or 45 treatments uh, really depends on the details of each case. So if something is very small, we might be able to do it in fewer treatments. If something's a larger tumor for that particular disease site, we might have to do it in more treatments so that it's gentler. Um, when we're doing palliative radiation to try to help with pain and things like that, we really weigh convenience uh, for patients because they're trying to get on to different therapies like chemotherapy or immunotherapy or sometimes going on to services like hospice. Uh, and so all of those things go into your doctor's decision-making processes to decide ultimately what's the right treatment schedule. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. That's perfect. Now, um, I'm wondering if we might hear from Javonda next with our next question. I'm curious. So can you talk to us a little bit about how you review treatment plans for cancer patients who are going to be receiving treatment under your care? So after our initial diagnosis of cancer, the patient comes in to get a radiation treatment plan. After that, that plan is then um, created and reviewed by the doctor, dosimetrist, and the physicist. Um, after everything is reviewed and approved, the plan is then sent to the treatment machine. Um, basically, before the plan gets to us, there are so many checks that each and every person has to do. So for a physicist, they have to review the plan for consistency, appropriateness, accuracy, and then they transfer that equipment, that particular plan to me. The therapist is, is, is involved from the day-to-day -day treatments 
We check to make sure that a consent is in. We check to make sure that everything that the physicist, the symmetrist, and the doctor's done um, that we can actually accomplish. And we, we want to make sure that it's for accuracy as well. So um, basically, we're going to see you Monday through Friday. And the, there's also many checks that we have to do throughout that. Um, the therapist is, is involved every day, like we previously said. So we're going to be basically your cheerleaders throughout your treatment plan. Um, every day we come in, we do the checks of the machine. We make sure that everything's working properly before you even arrive for your treatments. Uh, we review the treatment plan also weekly to make sure that everything is still in order. So if there's any changes or any edits that needs to happen between the doctor, the physicist, and dosimetrist, the therapists are also checking that treatment plan as well. Now, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Javanda. Um, Dr. Peller Larkin, it sounds like there's a lot of redundancy in this process. Is that intentional? It is, Dr. Evans. And I know you guys probably never heard of this phrase before, but I'm going to drop it. Dr. Phillips may groan. It's called the Swiss cheese model when we talk about <laughs> error. And so when you add a whole bunch of layers of people vetting and verifying information, we help to reduce the number of holes and of errors of being able to happen where they can fall through the cracks and reach you. No, 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 no Swiss cheese over here, only American cheese, which you know has no holes. This is why we have each other such that we can actually have each other's back and verify that the information that came from Dr. Phillips or from Dr. Evans, which, um, which is pretty much almost like the gospel to us, because that's the intent. They came up with this beautiful idealized goal, and we all want to help that happen. Then dosimetry created their plan. Physics said that's possible. It's a go. Send it down to therapy. And every single person is checking everyone else's work, too. Whatever Jovanda sees, guess what? She, in her role as a radiation therapist, has that right to stop the line, which is a phrase that we utilize in different centers to mean stopping the treatment before it starts so nothing happens to you. That's how we keep that 0.2% error rate real. And so her checks are essential because that's the last stop before the beam touches you. And so everyone is verifying everything. And most importantly, we're trying to make sure that whatever Dr. Phillips and Evans came up with, that's what happens to you. That is our goal. And we do this on a routine basis. And the therapists even verify each field every single time they deliver it before they even beam on. So you are being checked just like people in the airline industry check their airplane. Thank you, Dr. Pollard Larkin. So, Dr. Phillips, tell me a little bit about the checks that happen between physicians. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we try to do is promote what we call safety culture. Uh, what safety culture is, is the idea that everyone that is part of your care in a radiation oncology department is responsible for making sure that your radiation is delivered safely. Um, one of the big things we do between physicians is what we call peer review. Um, what peer review is, is that I, as a physician, cannot sit on an island and say, this is the way we're going to treat this patient, and no one checks me. Um, so one of the mandatory things that we do in radiation oncology is every patient's plan um, is reviewed by another radiation oncologist, but usually a team of radiation oncologists, um, most of the time before it's ever delivered, but usually within the first few days uh, of a radiation treatment plan to make sure that everyone is in agreement that this is the right plan for the patient, that we've decided on the right treatment for the patient, that the plan itself is correct, that we're targeting the right areas, uh, and that we're missing the things that we want to miss correctly, uh, and that every piece of information that we've used to create that plan was used correctly. Um, and so before radiation is ever delivered to you, it's usually not just one or two, but maybe even as many as 10 or 15 physicians who have reviewed the plan and signed off on it uh, to say, this is the right course for this patient. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. That's great. All right. So um, next, let's start hearing from Javanda first. What procedures are in place to make sure that um, on a daily basis that I'm getting the right treatment? How do you as a therapist make sure that the right treatment is given? Okay, so once we call you guys to schedule your radiation treatments, be sure to tell us the appropriate time that you want to come. That's a big one. We do not want radiation to interfere with your daily life. 
If there is a time that you want to come, please reach out to your therapist. You're going to come for your daily treatment every day. We're going to get your name and your date of birth. Those are our two identifiers to make sure we have the correct person. And you're also going to tell your radiation therapist where we're treating. It's not that we don't know where we're treating. We just want to double check that we're treating the correct area. After that, if, it re if you're required, you're going to either remove the item of clothing where we're treating, and then we're going to line you up for treatment every day. Basically, you're going to lay on a table. It's not comfortable, but it's needed. So we're going to lay on the radiation table. We're going to align to the marks. Make sure we're nice and perfect before we beam on. And when I say nice and perfect, that basically means we're going to do imaging at least once a week. We're going to image you. We're going to make sure everything's perfect before we give you your actual treatment. The images are reviewed by your radiation oncologist every single time we image you. So we're never by ourselves at any time. If we ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, your radiation oncology team steps in right away. And that team is basically your radiation oncologist, your physicist, your nurse, social workers, anybody we need to make sure that you're being treated accurately and safely. Thank you, Javonda. That's perfect. Dr. Phillips, what would you say to patients about how they should communicate with you during treatment? Um, if they're feeling side effects, is that something they should keep to themselves? What's your, <laughs> what's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think um, sometimes patients, they're here every day and they develop these great relationships with the staff that are taking care of them. And sometimes that generates like almost a sense of not wanting to disappoint their team and say, oh gosh, I'm having this side effect. Oh gosh, I'm having uh, that nausea or oh gosh, I'm uh, feeling fatigue. And so you wanna be a great patient for your team. But what we want is we wanna know exactly what's going on uh, because a lot of things are, we can, we've seen, we've, I, I don't even say a lot of things, we've seen almost everything. Um, and so for each individual disease site, uh, we have a toolkit that we can use to treat the side effects um, that come from radiation and they're very effective. Um, and so there's no reason to go through a week, a month, two months of radiation with a side effect that we could pretty easily manage. Um, sometimes intervening early also reduces the severity of a side effect, particularly around things like weight loss uh, or uh, feeling fatigued if it's related to anemia and things like that. Uh, and so we always encourage patients, um, you're here in our department a lot of times, five days a week, you almost always pass by the nurse's station, you interface with the therapist, you can check in every single day uh, and just let us know what's going on. There's always a radiation oncologist in your department, um, whether it's your physician that day or whether it's one of the other radiation oncologists, but there's always somebody that can check in on you to make sure things are going the way we want it to. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. You know, when I think about that question too, the other thing that I really want um, to encourage patients to do is to understand their setup and how treatment should happen. So, you know, Javanda um, and Dr. Phillips and the radiation oncologists will have designed a mobilization devices, something to keep you in the same position each day. So you should understand what the position is for your treatment. Um, and I think above all, um, my biggest concern for my patients is that they let me know when something doesn't meet their expectation, okay. right? So, um, you know, asking a question and saying, hey, I was expecting to have that little pad on my chest like I did yesterday. Um, it's not there today. Has something changed in my treatment? Or just, you know, ask for a clarification about that. Dr. Pollard Larkin, what are your thoughts about patients who who are very quiet during treatment? Are they your favorite kind of patients or, or not your favorite kind of patients? Well, Dr. Evans, I don't want anyone to think you're not my favorite kind of person. I, I love <laughs> I knew everyone. that. I knew that. <laughs> I love everybody. And I truly am Southern, albeit from Miami. I want everyone to realize, and I understand sometimes it's cultural and everything. You want to keep things to yourself. You don't want to aggravate or bother Drs. Evans or Phillips or Javonda or any of the nice people you see all the time, but you've got to speak up. And although this term is vilified in modern media, be a Karen. Oh, yes, I said it. <laughs> I want people to speak up. Yes, in radiation oncology, in medicine in general, you have to speak up for yourself. 
be your own advocate. Get your husband to say something. Your, your person you don't like, anybody, but speak up. If it doesn't seem right, but for Devonda Beans on, you better do something to or do something to let her know something is not right. You should be verifying along with her that you have the right armbands on, that the right device is being brought for you, and that all the um, all the different things that they utilize, the apparatuses for you, are the things that they're bringing in. And then secondarily, I'm going to get bilingual on y'all. No se mueve. Don't move. When yeah. Jovanda leaves the room after she's aligned you to the lasers and you write on those nice marks, you look and you wait for her to leave. Please don't scoot down. We catch this in the imaging. You're not slick. And then the worst is after imaging if you choose to do this. If you itch, if you need some, you need to hit the, the potty, don't worry. Tell us. We'll rather wait the five minutes and bring you back than you moving after you've been imaged and aligned appropriately. Doctors signed off, everybody smiling, cheesing, they verified and they beam on and you've just sunk down the mobilization device. There's a reason why we call it a mobilization device to keep you still. So you play a huge part in making sure that that accuracy and precision actually occurs. So relax, lay there and speak up. That's the way to make sure you get the best treatment and rat on and possibly in every other service too. You know, you've got to speak up on your own behalf. So thank you. And yes, I did say via Karen. I want to see how that trends. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Javonda, anything else that people should think about? You know, um, I always laugh in our department because my, my therapist will tell me that the patients will give them a hard time and say, name and date of birth again? Don't you know me by now? What, what's your response to that? My response to that is I know you, I've seen you for however many days, but I still have to check it. And the reason why is your name is John Smith. There are hundreds of thousands of John Smiths out there. You don't want me to treat your brain and I'm supposed to be treating your arm. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're not being nosy or anything. We just want to make sure we're treating the correct thing. We want everybody on the same page, especially when we're about to beam on. We can give radiation, but we cannot take it back. That's right. That's an excellent point. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything for today. I want to thank our panelists so much um, for their insights and expertise. Um, and I just want to say that my life would be more fun if I worked with y'all every day. <laughs> um, I'm going to encourage everyone to visit rtanswers.org for more information on radiation therapy safety issues. Um, so you can learn more and get access to additional patient videos, brochures, um, side effect charts, and more. On it, you're also going to find a full array of information, um, including brochures and videos on a variety of different cancers that you can watch online or review online, more information about radiation therapy, questions you should ask your doctor, as well as patient stories from people who've received radiation therapy. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at rtanswers underscore org, as well as at astro, A-S-T-R-O underscore org. Thanks everyone so much for your time and have a wonderful day and take good care of you. Thank you.